Please go to elithecomputerguy.com in order to view schematics, code, and more for the projects that you are learning about. Welcome back. So in a previous video, I did a demonstration showing why OLED screens for Arduinos are such cool things. So in the video today, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to print text out to an OLED screen. So this is slightly different than when you're going to be printing out to an LCD screen because with OLED screens, you have so many more options. Now it is important to understand when we're printing out to an OLED screen, we can print out a whole bunch of things. We can print out bitmap images, we can print out scrolling text, we can do a lot of fancy things that you can't do with LCD screens. But today, all I'm going to show you how to do is print out text because realistically, that's probably going to be the most important thing to do when you're dealing with your projects. So what we're going to be doing today, our simple little project, is the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to print out a sample splash screen. So a sp splash screen is something that pops up essentially whenever you turn on a electronic device or a computer and many times that splash screen can tell you information that may be important now it may be a logo or something like that if you're dealing with a, a large corporation, a large vendor, but for you, if you're creating uh, custom little widgets, maybe for a splash screen, you want to put something such as a phone number or what to do if there's a problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, throw up a little splash screen, then after 5,000 uh, milliseconds, five seconds, then we are going to print out a simulated uh, network tester. So it's going to, uh, across the top, it'll have a title of net test, as if this is a network tester, and then it'll actually say IP colon. 192.168.1.1, the subnet, the gateway, the DNS1, and the DNS2. So for this, I'm simply plugging in strings because I'm trying to keep it simple as far as this project goes. But if you're trying to create, let's say, a network tester device using an Arduino, you could put in the actual values for the variables there, print out the values for the variables, uh, rather than simply printing out text like we're doing today. So let's go over to the workbench so I can just show you how this project is assembled and then we'll go over, take a look at the code, and then I will demonstrate how all of this comes together. So today we're using our standard uh, 128 by 64 OLED screen that we've been using for the projects, and we are simply connecting this to the Arduino. Now again, since this is an I2C or an I squared C uh, screen, we only need two wires uh, for the data. So we have two power wires and two data wires. So we're using the five volt and the ground, and that goes to VCC and ground on the OLED screen. And then for the SCL, SCL goes to A5 on the Arduino and SDA then goes to A4. And so these are not actually defined within the script. This is just something that you normally do whenever you're using the I square C protocol in order to communicate with I square C devices. So just to keep that in mind that uh, SCL then will go to A5 and SDA will go to A4. And that's really all we need uh, in order to assemble this project. So let's go over and take a look at the code. So here's the code for this project. Essentially, we're just setting up the environment. And then what we're going to do is we're going to print out a splash screen. And then from that splash screen, we're going to go into the loop. And then we're going to do a simulation of a network tester. Uh, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to include our library. So we need to include the wire.h library. So that's uh, included by default uh, with the Arduino IDE. Then we also need the Adafruit SSD uh, 1306 library and the Adafruit uh, GFX library. So I talked about those in the demonstration video. So you're just not going to need to add these libraries. Again, when you go to uh, install the SSD1306 library, make sure you install the Adafruit library for it. Uh, there are a few different libraries out there. Um, and if you install a different library, then this particular project won't work. So make sure you install the one uh, for Adafruit by Adafruit to make this work. Again, even though this isn't an Adafruit OLED, it's actually an OLED from DIY, the Adafruit library works. So just make sure you get that one. Then we're gonna come down here and we're gonna simply going to define and we're gonna define the OLED width and the OLED height. Uh, so how wide is it and so how high is it? So this is 128 pixels by 64 pixels. Then we're gonna come down, we're gonna define, we're gonna define the OLED address. Remember the I square C address 
address. Uh, this is an addressable protocol, so you can have, I think it's up to 127 devices theoretically connected in those two little wires, and you differentiate between them all using an address scheme, kind of, kind of, sort of, uh, like an IP address scheme. Maybe more like a MAC address scheme, really. Uh, but the important thing is uh, you need to know what the hell that address is, so you plug that address in here. If you don't know what the address is, um, I did a project before with the I square C or I two C scanner. So simply do that project scan to find out what the address is, and then plug that address in here. If you don't plug in the right address, this project simply won't work. Then we're going to come down here, and then we're going to use the Adafruit underscore SSD one three zero six to create the display. So you can call this whatever you want. You can call this OLED, OLED display. You can name this, however, uh, but this is how you will reference the display going forward. So this is important. So let's say you had multiple displays on your particular project, then you would want to name them differently. So here, we're simply calling this screen display. And then we're going to feed it the OLED width and then the OLED height. So we're creating an item called display with this, this width and this height. And so that's what we're doing in the first part of this project. Then we're going to come down and we're going to go into the setup for the environment here. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is we actually need to begin the display. So we're going to reference display. So display.begin. Then we're going to plug in this SSD 1306 underscore switch uh, cap VCC. And then this is where the OLED address goes. So the OLED address that we defined up here gets plugged in here. So theoretically, you could just simply write in, type in 0x3c there and it would work. But we're just referencing that variable so it can change. Then the first thing that we're going to do is display dot clear display function. So remember, especially when you're doing dealing with screens in the Arduino world, Things don't happen automatically. You actually have to tell them to do things. So if you turn on a pixel on a screen, you also have to remember to turn off that pixel or you're going to start running into problems. And so this clear display function that will clear, basically that essentially cleans the entire screen and you start from square one. So we want to turn off all of the pixels on the OLED and that's how we do it. Then we're going to come down here and we're going to display dot set text size. So you can set the size of the text that you're going to print out. This is from one to eight. One is the smallest, eight is the largest. And eight gets pretty big on a uh, 128 by 64 screen. So we are simply going to set the font size at two. Now to be clear, this isn't two as in what you would see on a uh, on a computer screen, it's two in regards to the OLED screen. So this is one notch bigger than one. Then we can do display dot uh, set text color. So you can set the color of the text. Now again, if you have an OLED screen that actually does multiple colors, uh, uh, then you can put in different colors here. Uh, with the OLED screen that we're using, it's kind of sorta a two color screen. Basically what that means is the top bit is yellow and the bottom bit is blue. So basically whatever you're printing, it's always gonna be white. If it's not, and so when we say white, white is the default color. So when we print out white and the yellow bit, then it's yellow. If we print out white in the blue bit, then it's blue. So white is kind of like that default color, but you can set the text color here. Then what we're going to do is we have to actually set uh, the cursor. So just like with LCD screens, we have to say where we are going to start printing at. So display dot set cursor function. And then we have zero and 17. So zero is the column. So when you're going left to right, Basically, zero means the first position on the left. So when we're dealing with text, when we're dealing with these screens, um, the first position is actually zero. It's not one through 128. It is in fact zero through 127. So we're gonna say is at the first position to the left, and then we're gonna say essentially zero the first row. So this will plug us up at the top. So this is the, the first place we'll be able to print. So at the zero, zero position, at size two, at color white, we are going to print out welcome. Then what we're going to do, past that is we're going to, again, we're going to display. Uh, we're going to set the text size. We're going to leave this as two. We're going to display dot set text color to white. So you can modify this here. Um, I haven't modified this, but I've just left it there to, 
to see, kind of grasp what's going on. Uh, then what we're going to do is display dot set cursor. So we're going to set the cursor to a new position. And so now we're going to uh, set the cursor to the zero, so the first position on the left. And then we're going to go 17 down. So this starts at the first position down. Now we're going to go 17 positions down. Then from here, what we can do is we can actually start printing much like we would print on a serial printer, right? So we can say display dot print line. So print line means print this and then go to the next line. So we don't have to set the cursor again as we're printing this stuff out. So at the size two, we are going to print line this is. We're going to go down on the next line, a splash, and on the next line, screen. Um, and so that's going to print out. So that's an important thing to realize. One of the nice things with OLEDs is once you set that cursor position, then you can simply do print line to print on the next line, to print on the next line, to print on the next line. You don't have to set the cursor position for every single line you're going to be printing to. And then the final thing function here is one that you definitely don't want to forget. So it's kind of interesting how, how the OLED screen works. Basically what, what's happening up here is that all of this information is being loaded into the memory of the screen. So it's simply in the memory of the screen. It doesn't get automatically written to the screen. What you have to do is you actually have to use this display function. So display dot display. So this is a display function here. And what that does is that then writes what is in memory to the screen. So literally, you can do all the rest of this, but if you don't fin finish off with this display function, uh, then, then it's simply not gonna write to the screen. So display is what we're referencing. So this could be called OLED, this could be called OLED display. This is the name of what you're re referencing period and then this is the display function so i want you to make because this here can be a little confusing so just realize this is the function this is what you're referencing and then for here we're going to delay for 5,000 milliseconds or five seconds so again so this is going to be a splash screen so this is going to show up it'll be there for five seconds and then it will drop into the loop now again this is basically just a simulation so we're not going to do any fancy coding here we're just simply going to print out some more information so the first thing that we have to do is again display what we're referencing and then clear display so what we need to do is we need to delete that splash screen that we just created that's the very first thing Literally, if you don't do that, everything gets printed over top of each other and it just literally becomes a mess. Then the next thing that we're going to do is display dot sex, uh, set text size. And so we're going to set that to two like we did before. Set text color. We're going to set that to white like we did before. Uh, set cursor again to the zero, a zero position. And then we are going to display dot print line or print uh, net test. So this is simply going to be net test. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come go, go down and then we're going to do display dot set text size. And so here we are changing the text size. So this is for the title of what we are doing. Uh, this is for the important information. And so for here, we're going to set the text size to one. This is the smallest size. Then we're going to set the text color again to white, then display dot set cursor. So what we're going to do here is again zero, and then we're going to go down to the 17, we're going to go down 17 rows. And then what we're going to do is we're simply going to do display dot print line and essentially we're simulating uh, as if this was a network tester. So print line the IP with the IP address, uh, display dot print line the subnet, uh, display dot print line the gateway, display dot print line DNS1, uh, display dot print line DNS2. So basically all of this will show up on the screen. So we'll be able to print all of that out. And again, if this was a real network testing uh, thing, uh, you would be printing out the values of what it's say, say, seen uh, instead of basically these strings, but we're just doing this as a test. And then finally, uh, as said before, we need to do the display dot display function. So then this prints uh, everything that is in memory. So remember, clear display, clear display erases the display. So you need to use that. And then once all of this code has been written, you then need to call the display function to actually print all of this information from memory on the OLED screen onto the screen itself. So with that, let me uh, connect the Arduino project, uh, upload the code, and I will show you how this works. So here's our little project. I'm going to plug it into the computer, 
and then we'll see the screen. So welcome, this is a splash screen. So you get your nice little splash screen there. And then we have net test. So it's a little hard to see because it's kind of hard to focus, but let me tell you in the real world, this is absolutely clear. What you can see is in this two. So this is the, the two font size. We can see net test. And then under that, at the 17th position, we then have IP, it says 192.168.1.1. Then it says subnet, 255.255.255.0. Then it says gateway, uh, whatever it is, 192.168.1.1. DNS1, 192.168.1.2. And DNS2, 192.168.1.3. And again, I know, I know trying to get this through the camera, it may be a little foggy to see, but I swear to you in the real world, this is absolutely clear and very easy to see. Uh, as long as you have good eyesight. Now do, do remember, do remember this is kind of small. Again, this is the size of an LCD. This is the size of simply a two row LCD screen um, versus, versus this. Uh, so do realize that the text on here is incredibly small, but as long as you don't need glasses, uh, it's pretty easy to see. And so that's really, that, that's all there is to this project to, uh, to be able to see how this works. So you're able to print out with a text, again, have something like a splash screen and we'll go here. Now the important thing, again, if you're new uh, to my videos, you're new to these videos where I'm showing you this OLED screen, do realize with these colors, how this OLED screen is built is the top bit, the top bit is yellow and the bottom bit is blue. So I'm not putting any code in here to make this yellow. Literally any text I put in here with the white, if I, I put it as a color of white, will show up as yellow. And any text I put down here uh, and I put the, the, the color as white, it will show up as blue. So if I have images, if I have anything, basically if it's here, it's yellow. If it's there, it's blue. So I'm not doing any fancy coding or anything like that. That's just how it works. And that's another important thing to be thinking about when you buy these OLED screens is with the OLED screens, some of them are one single color. Some of them are like this, where they have one color at the top and another color at the bottom. Others are actually full color OLED screens. So you do have to keep that in mind when you're buying the OLED screens of what exactly you're buying and what it will look like. So when the end user is interacting with it, uh, you can design your project uh, to make things better for them. So with that, that's really all there is to this project. So that's a basic overview of how to print text to one of these little OLED screens. Now the cool thing with OLED screens versus LCD screens is that you can do a lot with these. Again, you can do bitmap images, you can do a lot of other th things. Uh, one of the things that you can do is you can actually do different fonts. So not simply uh, sizes, but entirely different fonts. I think there's 30 different fonts you can use on here. Um, and so those are things we'll probably talk about in the future, but for right now I just want to show you how to do this uh, from from a simple uh, standpoint basically just being able to print out text because I figured that's what most people are going to do again if you're going to have some kind of Arduino project really the valuable thing is being able to print out some type of text for you to understand what's going on with your Arduino project really the only downside and I will say it is a bit of a downside with these OLED screens is just to give you a hint they tiny <laughs> they are tiny like I go over here and uh, so this, this is, this is a 20 character by four row LCD screen. And you can see the size of this versus the size of this little OLED screen. And literally this OLED screen can have more text on it than this screen can have. The problem you're going to run into from a user experience perspective though, is that these are, this is tiny, 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 tiny. Um, and so if you've got good eyes, now I honestly, I have good eyes. I don't, I don't wear glasses. I don't wear contacts. And so I can read the text on here just fine. But something that you're going to have to be thinking about with your users is if you're putting this into a production environment and you're expecting your users to be able to see these tiny little numbers and words, you might run into a problem. Again, this is, this is one of those things where we talk about people ask, you know, what is the right product to use for a project? Oh, oh, okay. So L OLED does all this great stuff. So I'll only use OLED for my projects. Well, something to think about if all you have to do is print out text again, IP addresses, temperature ranges, something like that. You may want one of these ugly old fashioned massive bezeled screens 
because it actually prints out the uh, the text in a large format that basically almost anybody can read. So although technically this is far inferior to an OLED screen, in reality, in a production environment, simply having big old ugly text that somebody can in fact read might be far more valuable to you. Uh, so anyways, this was just a little demonstration of this OLED screen, again, being able to print out the text. Again, for somebody with good eyesight, I find it to be absolutely great. I, I especially like the fact that you can do those print lines. Now you do have to initially define the cursor position when you're going to be printing out, you know, for the first the first uh, line of text that you're going to be printing out. Uh, but then past that, you can see simply do the print line and then go next, next, next. Uh, that makes life a lot easier versus with uh, with these LCDs where every single piece of text that you put on it, you have to define the cursor position of where you're going to start writing. Uh, so being able to do print line that is a useful thing. Uh, but this is just a, just a good way to be able to print text out from your Arduino project. So, as always, I enjoyed doing this video and I look forward to seeing you at the next one.